Alright ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another uh, video in our series on uh, inside of the Coders Campus. Now uh, this video comes from one of my Java video tutorial students, but I figured I would share it with the Coders Campus because um, this is probably an application or, or a type of program that uh, a lot of you will have to do uh, in your studies, in your programming career. So this one comes in uh, asking about uh, d divisors. So the uh, the idea of this particular uh, application is to take in an integer uh, as an input. So in this case, the integer we're taking in is eight, and then we find out the divisors of that integer. So for the for number eight, the divisors are one, two, and four, uh, respectively. Now the, the question comes in uh, in such a way that they want to know how to take the divisors and place them into an array so such that you know the array is called num and at position 0 of the array we have the first divisor in position 1 of the array uh, we have uh, you know divisor the second divisor and so on and so forth the third divisor so um, that's very it's very uh, straightforward to implement but there's actually two different ways to implement uh, this particular program so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take his code he has the perfect class uh, He's called a class called perfect number and he has a public static void main method. The main method is what you need to actually fire up any Java app. So inside of there is his code, which I will copy. Uh, I think that's enough of the um, brackets. Let me just, it looks like he's opening two brackets, so therefore he closes two. Okay, let me grab that and flip over to my uh, spring tool suite, which is essentially just Eclipse. If you're using Eclipse, you'll be familiar with this. And I will start a new Java project. I'll call it, uh, let's see, I'll call it divisors, I guess, and say finish. And uh, then inside of divisors, I will create a new class. I will call the class, well, perfect number. And uh, I will check the box for adding the public static void main, which just will do just like it says it'll add in a public static void main method for me so I don't have to do all the typing and I will paste in the code from the student now I'm gonna do two things first off I'm gonna import the scanner the scanner is what is used to read input from the console and the second thing I'm I'm going to do is type is hit the uh, control shift and F key F like Frank and that will uh, just format the code nicely so this is his code let's take a look at what it does right now let's go ahead and run this as a Java application and it says, please enter a positive number. So I'll type in the number 8 and hit enter. And you see that it goes through the, uh, the motions to get the divisors. But all that's doing is a system print uh, or system out to print it onto the console. And that's not the requirement. The requirement is to turn this into an array. So let's go ahead and create that array. Like I said, there's two ways of doing this. We'll start with the array and then we're going to switch to the array list. Okay. So first of all, let's create an int array called uh, int array. Or like, actually, let's call it divisors because that's what we're putting into this array equals uh, new int array and we need the we need to actually specify the bounds the size of this array <clears throat> so that's one of the downsides of using an array you actually are bounded by the size of the array so let's put in 50 for now and that means all we can put into this array is 50 integers 50 divisors we'll get to the the solution for this problem in a second so now we go in, it reads a number, and uh, it, it stores a number in the integer called num. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to also um, store uh, an index. Okay, We'll start the index at 0. The index is for the uh, int integer array that we created. Okay, We'll start at 0. And what we'll do is in the for loop, so he's going through all the numbers uh, between 1 and the number that we typed in initially itself, which in the example was the number 8. Uh, but we're not letting it hit the number 8 uh, because we're just using less than as opposed to less than or equal to. Okay, If we just say less than, it'll go from 1 to 7. And then what it does is it uses the mod tool, the modulus um, symbol here which is just a percent sign to find the remainder this is what uh, this does is it finds the remainder of a division so what it'll do is it'll do uh, num divided by the uh, i variable whatever the um, value of i is at the given time that this runs and then it'll do the division and find out the remainder of that division so it'll do 8 divided by 1 the remainder from 8 divided by 1 is 0 because that works perfectly and then it does 8 divided by 2 What's the remainder there? Well, it's still zero because it divides perfectly. Then it does eight uh, module or mod three, and then what is the remainder there? Well, three can only go into eight two times, right? 
2 times uh, 3 is 6, and then there's a 2 remainder left over. So now the remainder here will be assigned to k, which will be 2. And then, so that means that 3 does not divide equally into 8. And therefore, k will not be 0, therefore we won't add it to our array list, uh, or rather our, our array. Uh, here now, if k equals 0, that means we have a perfect uh, remainder, which is 0, which means we have a perfect number that can divide, well not perfect number, sorry, we have a number that can be divisible by whatever i value was given. Whew. So, what we can do here is throw in the, uh, the value of i into our int array, which we call the divisors, at the index that we specified. Okay, so now I'm going to get rid of the system out print line, and what this is going to do is this, it's going to take the value of i and place it into the div divisors uh, array, and uh, and give it an index or at the index that we specified, which is zero. Now, obviously, once we uh, insert into this array, we want to increment our index. Okay, so we use index plus plus. Uh, that's the same as writing index equals index plus one. Okay, these two lines are, mean the exact same thing. It's just this is a shorthand way of writing it, uh, just as an FYI. So I won't use this because this, you know, it's just uh, it's a lot more text to write, and I like to be efficient. So I'll use index plus plus. So that'll work perfectly until we get to a point where we're, you know, trying to put in more than 50 divisors because then we'll get an exception. Uh, but before we get to that point, I want to now uh, export or show on the screen what is inside of our array. So we need to traverse our array. So there's a couple ways we can do this. I'll do it the manual way, which is just to say for int i equals, uh, let's say, 0, i is less than divisors dot length i plus plus so we, we want to go through from index position 0 uh, to the last index position and uh, output what's inside of our array so we'll say system out print line and we will say divisors at index i and uh, and output that to our console all right so let's uh, go ahead and run this so I'll right click on my public static void main and say run as java application and it says, please enter a positive number. So let's type in 8 and see what we get. All right, so we get a whole bunch of um, zeros, but that's because we're outputting the entire size of the array, which we've initialized at size 50. But as you can see, in the first three positions, we have 1, 2, and 4. Okay? So that essentially is what uh, we want to have happen here. So let's go ahead and run it again, and let's use a different, uh, bigger number. So let's use the number, I don't know, 100,000. Okay, so now we see all the divisors of 100,000 from the number 1 all the way up to, uh, well, what is this? Uh, or did I type in a million? What did I type in? 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So I typed in a million, sorry, not 100,000. So um, these are all the divisors of a million. Now let's, you see, we only have two more spaces open here, which is where the problem will arise. Let's run this again, and instead of putting a million, let's put 10 million and see what happens. So 10 million one two three one two three all right so we get an array index out of bounds exception 50 so what's happening here is we've only declared 50 spots in our uh, array of integers so what happens here is we need to do one of two things we either need to increase the size of the array or we need to put some sort of code in here to say look if we've hit index 50 um, then we stop putting numbers into our array okay how that would look is to say either 100 to increase the size of the array, and then we can go ahead and run it again. And this time, 10 million. Uh, so now we have plenty of room, so we have all the divisors of 10 million. But that's not exactly a very scalable solution. Okay. Neither is putting in a check to see if we have hit the, the maximum size of the array. So if we put it back to 50, and we say something like, uh, if k equals 0 and, uh, you know, index is less than, uh, what would it be, 40, or less than 50, then we can go ahead and execute this code. So I think this will work, but again, it'll only fill it up to the maximum size of the array. Let's go ahead and run the application and say 10 million. And so what that does is it just fills up the array and it doesn't give us any exceptions, but it doesn't give us every single divisor. So here's my solution to this problem. What we can do is we can sub out, we can take out the integer array, and we can replace it with an array list. Okay, so we'll call it a list of integers. We'll call it divisors again, and we'll say equals new array list storing integers. 
okay? So the beauty of the array list, let me go ahead and do my imports. Import in the uh, list, which comes from Java Util, and uh, import in array list, which also comes from Java Util. And what we can do is we don't need to specify a bounds, a size for this array. It can just keep on growing as you insert items into it. The only difference in our code is we're not allowed to use the uh, this code at, to insert into this array list. Instead, we use divisors.add and then we put in our integer to add it into, right? Add into this array list. So that's the the two ways to use um uh, the two different ways of inserting into either an array list or an array. So let me delete this one because now this one is of no use to us. And down here, what we can do is uh, we can change the way we iterate through this array list. Uh, now there's two ways you can do it. One way is to just change this to say divisors.size. Okay, and then we say divisors instead of at i, we say dot get because that's how we get stuff from uh, an array list. That's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is to, to implement something called a for each loop. Um, so we, we define an integer and we say divisors uh, dot, do we have to, is, it, is that enough to just say divisors? I forget now. Um, it looks like that's enough. So we can say uh, system out and do i like so. Okay, so let's just two two different ways to do the exact same thing. As you can see, using a for each loop, loop is a lot less code. Um, but again, it's completely up to you. So what I'll do is I'll comment out this one for now and just use our for each loop. And uh, I will go ahead and run this application again. Run as Java application. This time I'll type in the number 8. And as you can see, we don't have a whole bunch of zeros anymore. It's only, uh, it, it limits the size of the array list to be essentially 3 because all we did was insert 3 into it. Okay, that's not to say that it doesn't, um, it, what it does is when you create an array list, it actually initializes with a default size, which is I think 10 or 100 or something like that, and it works within uh, that initial size. So what you can do is, if you know the size of your array, I think you can put it inside of um, the actual uh, constructor type area here. So what we can do is we can um, uh, type in an integer. So we can put 10 in here. And that, I mean, if you're, this is not exactly a, uh, a mandatory thing. This is just for the sake of speed, okay? So if you're using a lot of array lists, or if you know that your array list is going to be of a small size, and, and like I said, you want to use a lot of them, then it's helpful to introduce the default size to begin with. Um, otherwise, you know, you can just leave it as not nothing inside of there, and I think it defaults to about 100. Um, but in any case... That's it. That is just an aside. So then we can run this again, and we can type in, you know, ten million. So one, two, three, one, two, three, and you can see that it does not crash, and it should show us all of the um, all of the divisors of ten million. One, two, three. What did I say? One, two, three. One, two, three. Ten million. Is that true? I feel like I'm missing some. Um, so that's interesting. Why? Oh, that's why. We said index is greater is less than fifty. Don't forget to take out the index code, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> That's a mistake on my part. You don't need the index anymore because um, we're not storing an index inside of the array list. My apologies for that one. So let me run this again. It's a good thing I ran that second test. And type in 10 million. So 10, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 for 10 million. There we go. So those numbers look bigger. So now we are able to put in um, more than uh, 50, or rather, yeah, exactly, more than 50 divisors into this array. Uh, array list, I should say. And, of course, you can go almost as big as you like until you hit uh, the, the constraints of the Java memory system. Um, you know, you can type in one, let's say billions, let's say nine zeros. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. That's one billion. Let's see how long this takes. Again, as you scale up, depending on the speed of your system, it takes longer and longer, but there you go. These are all the divisors of one billion. Cool? So there you go, that's how you can solve this problem in one of two different ways, uh, as well as outputting the numbers in one of two different ways. I can switch this up and uh, uncomment this and then comment that one. And uh, and then we can run this again. All it does, it does the exact same thing. It just displays it in the exact same way. So I can type in 10 million, and, and there you go. Those are all the uh, divisors for 10 million. That's just, you know, comparing the, um, you know, for, for loop compared to the for each loop. Okay, I prefer the for each loop because there's less typing, um, and it does the exact same thing. So hopefully that's of great use to you. Uh, thank you very much for listening to the video. Again, if you're interested in getting solutions like this to your homework assignments, go ahead and sign up to the Coders Campus at coderscampus.com. Take care of yourselves. Happy learning, and bye for now.